So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at a little known operator called memory in Expresso. And we're going to create this cool kind of uh, time delay effect. So I'm just going to get started with a fresh scene. And I'm going to create two spheres. So imagine this is a planet. And I'm going to create a small moon, smaller sphere. So I might just call this moon. And I'm going to call this the big one planet. I'm going to make the moon a lot smaller, maybe uh, 20 centimeters. And I might give it a slightly different color. So I'm just going to create a null to add an Espresso tag. And I'm going to drag over the planet because that's the object that's going to drive the moon. And I'm going to put the moon over here because it's been driven. And I'm going to go to XPool, click on the magnifying glass and look for memory. So yeah, as I said, this is a very little known uh, operator, but very useful. So we've got these um, two options. Well, we've got a few options, but uh, We've got history depth and history level. So these two history options are basically linked. We basically, history depth is like a buffer. So we just need to give this like quite a large number, maybe 100. And then history level is basically how uh, far back in the past it's gonna look. So if I want my time delay to be 20 frames, I set this to 20, which means the history depth needs to be at least 21. So I'll show you. So if I reduce history depth, uh, it's linked to the history level. So I'm just going to give it 100. So we've got quite a big range to play with. So I'm going to start off with a 30 frame lag. And I'm going to set the data type to vector. That's very important. So on planet, I'm going to select coordinates global position and do the same for the moon. And I'm just going to link global position to the input in memory and then output to uh, the global position on the moon. So now if we play back this animation and I start moving the planet, the moon follows. The delay seems to be uh, a bit extreme, so I'm just going to reduce that down to, say, 15. See what that looks like. It's a bit better. Just going to try and move it uh, like this. So that's a pretty cool effect. I don't want the moon to kind of uh, end up in the center of the planet, so I want it to kind of end up slightly outside. So that's a simple fix. I'm just going to go back to the Espresso editor. And I'm going to look for a vector to reels. There it is. And I'm just going to break this link here. And I'm going to link the memory output to the vectors to reels input. And then I'm going to get a math node. And I'm going to set the math, actually, I think real is fine. So I'm just going to draw a link from the x output into the math add input. And I'm just going to add uh, 30 units. And then what we need to do is we need to recombine uh, this x value into a vector value. So I'm just going to go and search for reals to vector, the exact opposite. Put that back here. I'm going to output the x value and then just directly link the y and z values. So basically we're just kind of adding a bit to x and then recombining, and then I'm going to output the position once again. So let's see what happens. So that seems a bit too close still. Uh, line mode should reveal. Yeah, it's kind of off center, but it's not far enough. So I'm just going to go back to my Espresso editor and add, say, 300, make this value a bit more extreme. So I can actually just adjust the distance here. So about there is pretty cool. 
And if I play this back now, it's a uh, it's going through it, but uh, yeah, it's ending up on the outside. And we could kind of we could make this um, we could make this expression a lot more complicated, so it basically doesn't intersect. But uh, I'm just going to leave it there. It's just a simple lesson. Introduce you to the memory node, and uh, in the next lesson we're going to take this further. So watch this space, and uh, thanks for watching.